Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. I'm Trevor Hankins. I'm Rachel Wells. And I'm Julia Cannon. And you're on the air with Power Squared. Uh, this week is our comic book book club. Yes. Comic book club. If I can just say it right. Uh, <laughs> and we all read Laura Olympus. Laura Olympus. Which was Yay. Julia's idea. Hey. <laughs> So, Julia, explain yourself. Okay, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say it for yourself. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so my reasoning for picking this was mainly just because it was the main thing on my brain when we were thinking of, like, what to read. Mm. And when you were asking me what to read, it was like... The, I'm like, I just looked around going, okay, what should you read? <laughs> this is the only book that was in front of me at the time. Sure, why not? I haven't read it in a while. Okay. Fair enough. So, um, <laughs> do you want to tell us what the book is about for people who have not read it and for those okay. of us that read it a long time ago? <laughs> <laughs> you see, the problem is I get the premise, but my, my brain is very terrible with names, so bear with me. <laughs> you can be vague. You, it's didn't, okay. you yeah. didn't learn about Greek mythology in school? I yeah. did, but remember, remember we you guys... We got, you guys got the gist about the whole American school system. You really think I'm going to remember? No, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, it's true. <laughs> hey, oh, that's God. on you somewhat, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, have you been to... Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, I have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pretty much it's like modern, like uh, Rachel says, like modern Greek mythology mm -hmm. for the most part. And it pretty much starts off with, like starting off with um, how Hades and I uh, believe it's Persephone. I remember Got the name. God, awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very terrible when it comes to names. <laughs> I'm like, with you. Like and, how, and how they and like how they interact for the most part, and pretty much like their like their two sides of the story of like how their lives divulge and how their stories will connect. Okay. That's the vague part. In case anyone actually wants to read it and figure it out for themselves. <laughs> how did you uh, hear about it? Um, funny enough, uh, like. At first, it was through like a Facebook ad and like a few other ads in itself because I used to because um I I used to be like a super avid reader of webtoon mm -hmm. and Lore Olympus was one of the stories that was like always like shown to me aside from amongst other ones. So when I decided to bite the bullet and just like give it a go and like the story looked interesting and I liked the art style because like I kind of like the type of like messy like type of aesthetic. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. <laughs> yeah, I really like the aesthetic of Laura Olympus. It's so so different from anything I've ever read. Just yeah. the um, colors, the shape language, the way they what do you how do you call it? The way they innovate on the comic and even the webtoon template is super interesting to read. Yeah. Okay. Paul, you got an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sir. As I recall for as I recall for this, we only read like the first uh, ten chapters. <laughs> well, I read into it a little further than that. If you can see, yeah. Yeah. But anyway. How many? Um, I'm reading it online. How many chapters does the book have? Oh. Yes, I lost track after like. <laughs> uh, the book contains the first twenty five episodes. Well, thank you. Okay, I've I've read up to thirty three. So <laughs> once again, you've gone above and beyond the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> this is twice in a row. This is not looking good. <laughs> it's engrossing. I like we, it. <laughs> so anyway, we were talking about the artwork. Yeah. 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 Uh, I thought it was. I thought the art style was. Uh, I thought the, the art style fit the story it was telling. Like pretty well. Yeah, I was, I uh, you know, I was, I was more intrigued at the beginning. And honestly, the more I read, the little less I got intrigued. But <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also, I also, by the way, listened to that. I started listening to that podcast you recommended around Halloween. 
Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, and I got like oh. 10 chapters into it, and then I was looking ahead like, year one wrap-up. Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. If it makes you feel any better, I skip the, I just skip the wrap-up once and just continue on with the story, considering oh. I just binge-watched the entire thing. It was, it was, hard, to, it was hard to listen to, because every, every time I'm trying to listen to it on the phone, I either get like a notification or a message, or you know, someone's calling, and I'm like, ah, all right. Oh, anyway. I turned those off years ago. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway. Honestly, I, the way I see it, some, I mean, any story is going to have some lull, some parts that are more exciting, some parts that are less exciting. Yeah. Um, whether or not that's um, indicative of, like, the writer's skill level. Um, I did I did feel like there was a little bit of a lull as we got closer to chapter 10, especially when it comes up. My, my main criticism of those first chapters was that Persephone like doesn't really have much character to her compared to everyone else yeah. but then I feel but... like she really starts to come into her own more as the story goes on so now I'm really starting to enjoy it more yeah I think for me it's like um like here's the thing don't get me wrong I know like when it comes to story writing like conflict and just like uneasiness is always going to be in the thing and it has to be a thing for a story to progress mm -hmm. but like does anyone ever have that feeling when like before it even happens you like you should start reading into it and you're just like oh no this person's about to screw up whether they know it or not yeah. or yeah. she's yeah. about to hit the fan i'm just like i know i have to read this to get context but i also don't want to read it god damn yeah. obviously i read through it but it's like one of those things where i'm like that's foreshadowing, baby. And it, I, that's the well, thing. I'm just like, it's like what, it's like this. That's what happened to me whenever I was like reading Laura Olympus too. I'm just like, oh no, also no. Just remembering the small hints of like just Greek mythology and how screwed up it could be. I'm just like, yeah. oh so, dear, oh dear. And then adding with it being modern, I'm like, how much you want to? Why do I want to assume that like a lot of this stuff is just going to be a shit ton of miscommunication and it's going to be funny and sad at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> You know, the thing that gets me about any kind of, any basically any kind of mythology, Greek, whatever else, all the family members are getting funky with each other. <laughs> Always. It's a common theme across all cultures. And I'm like, why? Why is it, why did y'all write this shit? What's going through your mind? Here's a question. Why was it taught in school? No, I'm kidding. Because, <laughs> um, especially because... Because the liberals actually, were taking over the school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Technically, Persephone's father is Zeus. Which would make Hades her uncle. The one thing I mainly remember for Greek, but the, like I know this is just like I know it's not entirely fact, but every time I just think of it, I'm just like, so Zeus is everyone's father, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> is it? I mean, it's if you think about it, though, I mean, like <laughs> you can't. I mean, gods only would, you know, kind of mate with gods. You know, and it's sort yeah. of like royal families. If you look at you know the history of royal families, they're all related because they all intermarry because they're the only people they could you know were up to their snuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, exactly. Yeah, I agree. It's you know weird, but I, it's I like think, strange to our modern Britain. sensibilities. <laughs> yes. Mm. I was going to say with uh, Greek mythology, a lot of what I learned is kind of from God of War. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I think it would have been helpful to have had sort of a primer in Greek mythology. Before, Probably. Yeah, you because, know, I mean, I wasn't sure about all the relationships. And they some of them kind of look a little bit like the others. And I'm like, oh, what is that? So, um, I mean, if they're all related, it makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. But, um, <laughs> Character, character, like design-wise, there is a flaw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, uh, but I read twenty yeah. chapters of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, according to webtoons, there is about two hundred and eighteen. Oh, okay. Good for them. Yeah. Trevor's gonna say something. Uh, yeah. So what the, what the visual style? Uh. I think uh, it's like making each character a solid color sort of works for it because it makes it easier to tell them apart. Yeah. Like, at true. a glance. Yeah. But uh, I'll admit, uh, because they because they made Hades blue, I ended up half thinking of like the Disney version. <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes I would imagine, for some reason, I would imagine James Wood's voice. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes when I imagine it, hey, that actually fits. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because um, it's interesting the way cultural 
mythoses or whatever, um, they all have similar ideas. They kind of they branch different ways with them. Like lots of cultures have a kind of hell or yeah. kind of afterlife. Yeah. But um, you know, the Christian afterlife, like the hell, and the Greek, the ancient Greek underworld are two very different places, right? And I guess when I envision like an underworld, I think of like fiery like torture because I was raised in a Judeo-Christian society. But um and I guess I would envision like the the head of of hell to be like a red creature like Satan, but then um Hades the head of the underworld seems to be consistently like a kind of blue character, which I just find very fascinating. And then you see um, in Laura Olympus in particular, you see like the world that Rachel Smith has built the underworld into is this like glittering city. And uh, I just really like the way she's taken this iconic mythos and turned it into something modern and something just unlike unlike any any kind of other Greek adaptation I've ever seen before. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I can't dispute that. <laughs> well, you read ahead, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, what is... You seem to know something about Greek mythology, so what is, what is Hades in Greek mythology? Ver I mean, the underworld versus... A fire and brimstone hell of your Judeo-Christian upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot cooler, you know. Like, um, you know, like what we're, what we're used to, like hell being like it's you know it's fiery, it's hot. Then um, the underworld is supposed to be like a whole bunch of nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just straight up nothing, right? Of course, in um, Lore Olympus, it's not quite nothing. <laughs> yeah. But um, it kind of has that same feel where it's there's stuff going on but it's it's kind of like a cool chill place almost i would like to think over the years like katie's finally finally said yes to a suggestion box and that's why they have everything so modern and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> another thing i like is that um i can't remember how much they showed in chapters one through ten but um they show the the older gods like hera and zeus making their way through time. So they haven't always looked like the mod their modern selves. At some point you see them looking like actual ancient Greek people. And then as they move through time, they take on like Victorian fashion and then eventually like, um, like 30s and 40s fashion. And I just find that really fun. <laughs> they gotta keep up with the times. Just, so. It's true, they're very fashionable people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when you're a god, you're do whatever you want to do i guess yeah. i think that's what i like if, if not just lore olympus like whenever there's like a premise or like um sort of some sort of mythology that's like taking a modern take i kind of like i really like seeing like how like someone would draw like them like say how they would look like in 2020 or like whatever so it's yeah, like obviously yeah. they're not not everybody they're not gonna be wearing toga for like thousands and thousands of years they, they're gonna adapt and it's kind of nice to see like what sort of like fashion sense they would take from whichever or what kind of trends they would take part of me wonders if like actual gods would just like stop keeping track at one point it's just like oh, i lost track of fashion in 1870 i'm too like, tired for this shit like i'm just gonna be portrayed as an old soul and call it a day leave me alone please <laughs> <laughs> like, leave me alone like leave me alone with my crocs and my <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be so you know, it changes so yes. quickly. I'd rather just stick with my pocket watch. <laughs> <laughs> or like maybe it's one of those times where like where they start going into the trends and then they realize that like people are going back like wearing like the like the like the flare pants or just going back into 90s fashion. I'm like, why are we going back to the 90s? What, what? I thought we were progressing. <laughs> but, but you think about it, it's true. The way fashion goes, their closets would always be stocked, right? Cuz they you're always going back to the fashion. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So. yeah. It actually be really, feeling... it'd be really cheap for them to keep up because they've already bought it. So. Or it's going to be a thing of like, Hades, what the hell? This is like your third pair of khakis. Why? Like, this is like your 1500th <laughs> pair of khakis. Why do you have so many? <laughs> like, listen, listen, listen. This one's from us. This, from, this one was like safely made. I was like, bro, they're the same thing. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, since uh, I was flipping through the first 10 chapters again. Uh, I thought it was in 
I guess it made sense that uh, Hades is a dog person. <laughs> oh, <Aww>. yes. <laughs> that was like my favorite. I knew it was just the jealous. beginning. I knew it was just the beginning, but that was like my favorite scene. It's just like, it's like, here, let me try. Good doge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no. All the puppies. All the puppies. I mean, not gonna lie, I would do the same thing that she did. And this is like, if there's like, a, I would, if there was like a big vicious dog, I would try to, I would try to befriend it. Like, no questions asked. <laughs> oh yeah, she managed that really easily. Sorry. <laughs> but more importantly, which dog are you? I'm the small one. <laughs> the small white one. <laughs> I would need to look again. Yeah. Later. Sorry, that's it. Later. All right. Anything else we want to talk about with this? Now there's, there, she's got volume. I know she has volume three out, right? Why is more? I think volume two. Wait, it was vol yeah. I thought volume two was the most recent one. Season I, or I saw a post where it was. She had a picture of volume three. Did she though? She's keeping it from you. Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell you. <laughs> That's right. Darn. <laughs> Don't Thanks for Julia. being the rat now. <laughs> you told us not to tell Julia. Yeah, I forgot. I That's forgot. fair. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Now she'll but, never uh, talk to me. I, I know we've only read like a fraction of how many chapters are out, but um, I'm really excited to keep reading through the story and finding out more about this this interesting world that Rachel Smith has made, and just especially because um, I don't know what it looks like in the books but occasionally on the online chapters they had, she comes out with like concept art hmm. and it's super interesting to see how it's all developed you know yeah. so were you reading this on the web yeah on um what is it webtoon yeah webtoon webtoons.com as opposed yeah. to actually buying the book the way oh, okay. <laughs> it's called a book club not a <laughs> web club just so you know I'm too cheap for that. <laughs> I'll give them my ad money. <laughs> well, you know, going <laughs> forward, we're going to have a problem. If not buying <laughs> All right. So we know Rachel can't afford anything. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So is there anything else about Laura Olympus? Or so how far have you read into this, uh, Julia? Um... It's just more of a recap. I remember I stopped at one point because, um, honestly, when it comes to me and webtoons, like it's something I will pick up and then like drop again. So, like, I honestly cannot remember where I stopped for the life of me. <laughs> so, I've just been recapping. Okay. And Rachel's in, into what, what chapter are you? Like chapter thirty-three or something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm alternating between catching up with this and catching up with Spy Family. Because oh. <laughs> I can't decide which one I want to catch up with first. Okay. I think that's kind of plenty of reading material. I think that's kind of the downside of living like in an era where we have like a lot of content because you don't know where to stop with something or where to end with something or yeah. if you should pick up something else or. There's too much to read. I yeah. think that's like it's that's why it's like I think it's like hard for like some people where it's like they don't know what where to where to put <laughs> their I guess their um like their brain cells into in terms of like which end <laughs> to get into or which story to get into. <laughs> there's too much to read and too much to watch. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 It's impossible. And that and that's why I just let my parents use my Hulu account. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Uh, About Laura Olympus? No, no. <laughs> Rachel? I want to say my favorite character is Artemis. <laughs> I think mainly because she's my favorite. Um, what is it? She's my favorite Greek god. She's what? freaking awesome. She's is... the goddess of like nature and stuff and the moon. Is, isn't it who they named the uh, new moon rocket after? I think they did, yeah. yeah she's Apollo's, Apollo's nephew. The last oh, yeah, Apollo. twin. Apollo's twin. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, shoots straight or something like that. I'm glad that she's Persephone's roommate because she's like the, the funky best friend. <laughs> yeah, like stands there as a rock, but also isn't afraid to have a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, does everybody else have a yeah. favorite Greek god? Mm. I haven't really thought about it personally. I, but, uh. <laughs> I think just for like, just because I've just been doing a recap of it, like for for now, it's just like Persephone because like I'm a sucker for like the cinnamon roll characters. Like I know there isn't a lot of like depth in her. However, it's just like I've I've always just been like a sucker for either. It's like I'm either a sucker for the cinnamon roll character or like the unhinged tyrant of the story, and there's no in between. So we're going with cinnamon roll for right now. You're, are you saying the word cinnamon roll? Yes. yes. What does that mean? Yeah, she's a cinnamon like precious, roll. Like precious, like precious child, like precious character. Like they're yeah. like too good for this world. Okay. Yeah. Too innocent. Right. It's from the onion. There's an onion headline that goes like. <laughs> Precious cinnamon roll, too good for this world. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I wasn't familiar. Right. For example, mo for example, in my eyes, mocha is a cinnamon roll to some extent. <laughs> <laughs> too good for this world. Okay. Truth there. <laughs> she is too good for this world. So you think she's too good for Marty? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Listen, you know why. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm like, listen, you know why. <laughs> she's, she's like, she's like a kind of innocent character, you know. Yeah. No, she's I, kind of innocent about yeah, her. Yeah, I feel like with Mocha, like if you were to give her a like a a boba tea, like a milk tea with boba, she would be very, very easily amazed by it, like happy kid, go lucky. Yeah. <laughs> but that's different than too good for Marty. Wow. <laughs> You hey, they can be, go inside. <laughs> and you want to be the artist, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, hmm, all right. Hey, isn't it good that I have at least a bias for one character? <laughs> That's fine. I, I'm impressed that you like a character that I helped create that much. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I well, this could also, I'm also like a sucker for like a purple, so. Uh... <laughs> oh. That's true, the purple. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be violet eyes, like this Taylor supposedly has. <laughs> That's where it came from. <laughs> um, not that I was a huge Liz Taylor fan, but that's it was, seemed unique kind of eye color. Right. Yeah, this is why we chose it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if we're done with Lore Olympus. Uh, I think it was my turn to pick the yes comic book club. Yeah. So I have. Uh, I actually have. Four options, like next to me, based Ooh. on depending on. Okay, whether let we, me check my bank account real quick. <laughs> like depending on if we wanted to do manga or uh, western comic. Ooh. Do uh, I just do I just say what they are? Or? Yeah, show yeah, us. Yeah, read them out for us. Show us. Show us. All right, so uh, <laughs> for manga, uh, one option is uh, we have the house husband. I have that one. <laughs> I've read that one. All right. Okay. Uh, and the other manga option was uh, Tomamo Chan's a fox. Ooh. Ooh, I've never heard of that one. Interesting. Uh, Tell us about it. I can read off the blurb on the back. That's good. Uh, Fushimi Tamamo is a fox from the Inari Shrine in Kyoto who longs to try high school life. She transforms into a human girl. While she thinks she's nailed her disguise, she's a little fur furrier than she realized. Adults don't seem to notice, and her classmates pretend not to, but Tamamo is definitely shaking up their ordinary high school life. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some furry shit. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <Yeah>. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, Chaos I, ensues, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, the critique furry shit. Okay. Uh, and then for like Western comics, I have uh, Lock and Key. Ooh. And uh, Stray Dogs. Ooh. That was Ooh. one of that was one of my Ooh. options last time. Let's go. Ah, I'd be happy with any of those. Hmm. Do we want to vote on what we read, or do we want Paul to pick? Or are or these available online for Rachel? Yeah. Or I what mean, we could do is I can always find them somewhere. Good. Or what we can do is I do have a D four on here, and if you guys tr Ooh. if you guys you trust me, I could just roll it. <laughs> oh, trust you. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, then we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different thing. Trust. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he trusted us with keep talking and nobody explodes. So. True. <laughs> and that was kind of a mistake because we get kept exploding right now. It's good. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, listen, that was on Rachel, not me. <laughs> oh, we're turning oh. now. Wow. Oh, uh, no. And this is who you want to just choose? No, okay. So you have a D4, so do you want to do that, or do you want to pick? Because uh, nobody obviously you can't vote. So. <laughs> well, I was going to go based on like how we uh, felt about any of the options. Uh, if we can't decide, we could do random. <laughs> We'd have to assign. But. Yeah. Hmm. You can't roll it. You go four and go, oh, that's this one. <laughs> I mean, to make it more interesting, we I can roll a d20 and we can just figure out the numbers from there. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, thinking about it, um, lock and key seems like... Um, I'm, you know, I'm always I'm biased towards manga, and I do love Way of the House Husband, but I haven't read Lock and Key yet, and I know it's like one of the the classic, like it was adapted into a show. Yeah. So part of me is leaning towards Lock and Key. But you can't watch the show. To see how it <laughs> 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 say you read it. I, I think it was canceled, right? Maybe. Or am I wrong? I it was forget. Netflix, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Netflix. Yeah. I figure if a comic gets a show, it got it has to be somewhat good, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you feel, Julia? Um. Yeah, I'm down for that one. All right. So, uh, lock and key. That's two votes for lock and key. <laughs> I'm voting for because yeah. we already have it. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. so... You already have all of them, so you would have wanted for either. I one. know. So they're all fine by me. Yeah, what we should do, though, honestly, one. is pick. At some point, not we'll do lock and key, but at some point we should pick a book that none of us have read and don't have and actually read it, as opposed to only like one. <laughs> what? What? Uh, like, I was like, are you? Wait, are you saying like we should all pick? Like in the future, we should all pick a book we all haven't read before. Or? One book that yeah, not, not okay. read five books, but read one book that we haven't read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read this. I read this. I read this. Uh, so with lock and key, we would only need to read uh, volume one or the okay. A club. Mm -hmm. It's called Welcome to Lovecraft. Because Lovecraft is the name of the town. Okay. Hey, yo, Rachel, this one might be for you if you have Prime, it's free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you mean the, the show? I'm sorry, I had to bring that joke for a full circle. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, wait uh, I'm asking for serious now. Do you mean it, it's the book is for free or the show? No, the, the book. <laughs> Ooh, but it's okay. a, like a Kindle it version. It just does of include. It says if you because because I'm a Prime member. It says included with your membership. Read for free. So if oh, you have a Prime membership, oh. if you don't want to support the writer, go ahead. Yeah. Well, that you I'm, can afford. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to bring that joke full circle. <laughs> kind of prefer. I prefer physical books most of the time. I mean, I do read. You know, obviously, I read comics online. But yes. If I can find it somewhere like that <laughs> yeah. okay so uh, lock and key yeah so i guess i'll mention while i'm holding this copy in my hand that i managed to get it signed by uh joe hill and Gary hey, let's go. oh rad that's awesome yeah i don't know if well you can see the gold uh <laughs> that, is, oh, that's, that is cool yeah that's super cool yeah all right and how long do we want to take to read it um we're coming awesome. up on the end of the year, so maybe we, we can save it for January, like beginning of January. Mm. Yeah, because did we? Because I think we established we probably shouldn't do another podcast or anything this month just because of the holidays and everything, right? Well, no, yeah. kind of November, December. Oh, uh, oh we're, do, we're doing right? we're we're doing a podcast every week, but uh. um, you know, I think we she meant um team meeting it oh, might be tricky maybe. at the end of this month. Yeah, we already kind of films, oh, rec excuse me, recorded something for next <laughs> Friday. Ah, we are okay. actually doing a uh, panel at LA Comic Con. Mm. Oh yeah, right. December. Yeah. yeah, December 4th. And I'm moderating a panel. And we're going to talk about Power Squared and Delegates and Pablo the Gorilla. <laughs> and so we had, a, we had a meeting with the uh, the panelists who are going to be there, hopefully, and uh, we're, we're going to use that for next week. Yeah. So. Awesome. Oh, wait, you said you guys are going the 4th? We're on the 4th, yeah. 
I felt cool not working. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not on the panel list because I had to yes. tell them in like October. <laughs> and they didn't set the time until. It. But uh, yeah, if you if you actually download the LA Comic Con app, you'll find us listed on Sunday at eleven o'clock. Under the radar mm-hmm. is the name of it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get a little. Awesome! That's exciting. Today. Yeah, it's kind of scary for me. <laughs> I kind of feel like the dog that caught the car. You know. We <laughs> believe in you. We believe in you. Don't oh. believe in yourself. Believe in the us that believes in you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of weird. I mean, I I sort of had the idea at Comic Con because it's like everything's either and we use this in the little introduction. Everything is sort of how to or spotlight on famous people, you mm-hmm. know. And there's really nothing in between. And there's a lot of people that do books that don't make it to comic book stores. They're still available, but you're not going to get a panel about them. So I just thought it'd be kind of yeah. And there probably could have been a hundred people up there, but we'd actually had met. We had actually met one of them in person, and two of them. Oh, one, uh, okay, one of them. They both been on our, this show, and then we've actually met Don in person. Don Wynn and Tina Sess Award are going to be on the panel, as well as Trevor and Paul, and maybe Ben Lee if he decides to show up. Yeah. So, who's also a co-creator of Delegates. Nice. And it's a great idea. Like you're doing something like a panel that's a little bit different from the norm, and um, you know, there's a lots, there's lots of comics out there that just don't get seen by the right eyes. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm excited so. for you. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be like a really small crowd showing up, but we'll see how it goes. I don't think it's a very big room, and we're up at you know, I think one of the things that we at least were up against at one time was a spotlight of William Shatner. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll manifest for a full house. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, next so time is lock and key. Lock and key. Uh, Are so we going to try to do a team meeting in December? And it's silent. Uh, there, oh, no. Freeze. Uh oh. Disconnected. Oh, that's not good. Shoot. So we're done that though. Hmm. What do we do? I don't know. That's where it all disconnect. I don't know. Dave, however, it still sucks. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Oh, we disconnected for a second. <laughs> yeah. So what did you hey, want to say? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we should sign So we've off. got... Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess maybe that would be a good time to say, hey, let's uh, sign off. We'll talk offline about uh, scheduling something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so until next time, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. I'm Trevor Hankins. I'm Rachel Wells. And I'm Julia Cannon. And you've been on the air with Power Squared. Bye. Bye.